Hi guys, your guitar goomba lucky back again today to answer the age old question that nobody really seems to be asking and that is, how do I make guitar parts with a shotgun? To find out, stay tuned. Because I don't really understand YouTube's current firearms policies and their prohibition against showing how to make ammunition, even though what I'm making is the opposite of making ammunition, I'm unmaking ammunition, but because of that, I'm not gonna show you how I go from this to this, because this is what we'll be using in the next step. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Now that's done, we can get started. All right guys, sorry if the audio in this part's a little sketchy because I'm back in the garage, so I'm back on the GoPro. Now in order to go from this, where we've got the plastic and the burnt powder residue from this spent casing, to this relatively clean, emptied out casing that will now fit over our tone and volume knob on our guitar, we have to get rid of all this plastic. So, what I'm going to do is chuck it up in my vise here, just tight enough that it won't spin, because I don't want to distort the roundness of the casing. Then, I'm going to use my drill with a really big drill bit. And I'm going to run that through here to get out as much of the plastic as I can in one go. See, that takes out big old chunks. Now. I want to get down into the base metal just a little bit. If you go too hard, too far, too fast, then you will go through the bottom of the casing. You will blow right through the primer, which is not what we want to do. Now that's about all I'm gonna be able to get with the drill. So now I'm gonna use a Dremel and this has a carbide burr, but it has very fine burrs on it and it even has burrs on the top. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use that to get down into the bottom of our casing here and hog out as much more of the plastic as I can. Now you want to stop every so often, empty out the debris, so I still have plenty there, and also keep in mind that the brass, while you're grinding on it, gets hot from all of this plastic in here, because the plastic actually gets a little melty. And you don't want that sticking to you, and you don't want to burn yourself, so be careful with that. And the probably the easiest, cheapest, safest way to acquire spent shotgun shells, if you're going to do, try this yourself, is to go to a range, preferably an outdoor one, or any range where people shoot shotguns, and you just go there and ask the management if you can go out on the range and pick up some empties. Pick up extras, because not all of my attempts were at first successful. So this is how I know you can blow right through the bottom of the uh, casing. So get extra.
You also want to stop every so often and check your knob to see if it will fit in there. Now, I've been playing with this and I ground down the tops of my knobs. These were domed knobs, but I ground them down flat so that they fit a little better. And as you can see, we're not quite there yet. So, a little more grinding. it into shreds. Got to get almost all of the plastic out of here in order for your knobs to fit. Now every time I put my casing back in my vise I turn it a little bit because it seems there's no way I can avoid getting a little bit of a ridge around the edge of the casing. So I did some tests and I decided to do like some ghetto knurling there and just use the teeth inside my vise to bite into the edges of the casing so that it'll give it a more consistent texture. Mm. And that's a first. Looks like I have unseated the plastic at the base which is a perfect result. It would be even better if I hadn't broken through the edge of the case right there. So that one, although now perfect, is no, is no good. I'm not going to use that one. But we go through, we learn from our mistakes, and we end up with something like this, where I can take my knob, drop it in there and it will fit perfectly and as it happens I have another one that I did earlier while I was testing this you know testing it out so with that we can head on in and get started with our epoxy all right now that we've finished with our shotgun shells it's time to whip up some epoxy. Now I've got the same epoxy that we used for insetting the medallion, aka cabinet knob, into our guitar body. So I'm gonna whip up a little bit more here. You want to, again, equal parts. It's supposed to come out that way, but sometimes it doesn't. Then seal this back up. Now because I already used the stir stick, I'm gonna use this burnt up uh, saber saw blade. And again, just like before, now what I'm using for a mixing board here is actually the instructions from my blast cabinet. Because as I said in a previous video, that was a new tool that I was gonna be using soon, and you guys saw me use it. Now, I may end up having to whip up some more because this is a fairly large opening here for the shotgun shell. So we may end up not having enough, well, we definitely not gonna have enough to do both shells. But hopefully we have enough to do the one I can just whip up some more epoxy. Scrape the excess in there. We're gonna take our nub, set that in, and I have this pick. Okay, apparently we do have enough. Because as I set this in, epoxy is squeezing out, which is fine, because this being JB Weld, it is sandable. Now I just don't want it to get into 
my control knob surface where the pot goes in because then you won't be able to use this on a guitar. And that wouldn't be good. Just insert that in, squeeze some more out. Just repeat the process until we get all of the excess. Put that into there. the bottom and it looks like we are straight there. I'll scrape off this bit, take this excess off. Set that one aside. Now we're going to make sure we're bottom. Get this on here. Push that down to the bottom. And set this knob in. And that should be plenty for us. There you go. That's a beautiful thing. Now, all we have to do is wait for the epoxy to dry. Again, we're gonna give it 24 hours to fully set up and cure. I'm gonna take a rag, go around the outside of our casings and clean up as much of the uh, epoxy as I can while it's still wet. And then, next time you see these knobs will be when we're putting on the finishing touches on our guitar. And that'll be coming up soon. For a chance to win this guitar, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment below. Full rules for the contest are in the description of the video. You should make sure you read them because every qualifying video that you leave a comment on gets you one entry into the guitar giveaway. This is episode 11, so you could have 11 entries at this point. Or at least, you know, if you've already left a comment on this video and all the previous videos, you could have 11. But also, if you follow at Guitar Goomba on Facebook, Instagram, and MySpace, actually, stand by, I just realized, this is episode 12. So, yes, you could have a dozen entries if you've left a comment on every one of these videos. You would have 12 entries to win this guitar, which is coming up soon because it is almost finished. We are getting into the wrap it up details and we'll be assembling it, setting it up, tuning it, demoing it, and I will give you the cost breakdown of what it would cost you to reproduce this guitar on your own. So, like, subscribe, comment to win. Follow at Guitar Goomba, that's all one word, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for behind the scenes and a little sneaky peeky at future episodes and future builds. So, if you haven't subscribed to the video, uh, to the channel yet, click the little uh, button right there. If you haven't seen the first video in this build series, click the button right there. If you want to see the most recent video that I've uploaded, that'll be right down there. So until next time, this is your guitar goomba lucky saying, keep rocking.